Shauna and Jody here with Real Sisters, Real Talk. We're glad to have you joining us as we talk about growing in our faith with God. Hey, it's Real Sisters, Real Talk with Jody and Shauna. That's my big sister, Jody, and I'm Shauna. And we are so excited to have this ongoing conversation with you. We're living our lives openly and honestly before you as we seek Jesus and encourage you to do the same because he has, he has been the source of our joy. He's been the source of our hope. And we love him so much. So thanks for joining the conversation today. And also, you're always welcome to join us at Real Sisters Real Talk on Instagram. We've got a page there, too, and we'd love to hear from you and interact with you there. But it is Christmas season, and the joy is all around us. And I'd love to ask, Jodes, what brings you joy? Well, so many things. Um, Spending time with family brings me joy. Um, silly, but colder weather in Southern California. What? I love and what? I know. <laughs> uh, not cold like you, but nonetheless, I like the chilly morning. Okay. Um, that kind of stuff is fun. And I love decorating my house. My house is decorated for Christmas. And that <laughs> just is, brings Yay. fun. But tr- so those are all superficial things. Mm-hmm. You know, spending time with my family just seems like we have... Johnny's birthday in November and then Thanksgiving and then just lots of things with Christmas and my little granddaughter um, turns one on December 21st. And so we just have a lot of family time, which, you know, is so good for my heart. And so I'm just really (laughs) grateful for all of that too. But, you know, just to get the heart of my, my joy, my deep gladness, that place of deep joy comes from Jesus Christ Mm -hmm. and what he did for me and so we're going to get to that, but, um, but yeah, how about you? What brings you joy? I get pretty excited about a really good cup of coffee, like really strong, mm-hmm. frothy coffee <laughs> brings me probably a ridiculous amount of joy. I love a really, really good cinnamon roll. Like, do you remember the, the cinnamon rolls that Grandma Bauman used to make? Yes. I mean, there. I've not found another amazing. one like it. Yeah, I know. Amazing. So I do appreciate like a really, really good homemade cinnamon roll. I would even say I'm a, just a little bit of a cinnamon roll snob because I don't want to eat the calories if it's not going to be amazing. So yeah, but cinnamon rolls bring me joy. Um, my people, oh my gosh, my people bring me so much joy. When, when the kids... When I get to be with them, and for me, I've got two kids that are overseas, and so being with them often means FaceTime, and I'll take it. I'll take it any way I can get it, but being with my people and connecting with my people, that's another thing, connecting, like meaningful connection, like heart to heart. I'm not super good at small talk. I'm really not, and I've learned over my lifetime the value of small talk and how it opens up relationship. But I just want to go right to the deep stuff. I remember my son was dating a girl in, in Colorado, and I traveled out there to spend a weekend with him. And I was meeting her for the very first time. And we went out to a restaurant for dinner, and we sat down. And I think we had water. We hadn't even had the meal yet or anything. We'd done some niceties and stuff. And then I was like, so tell me, how did you meet Jesus? <laughs> and my son was like hitting my leg like, mom, mom, stop. <laughs> Like, like, too soon, too soon. I was like, too soon? Sorry. I just want to like get to that stuff. Like I love yep. deep conversations. I kind of geek out on that. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, I enjoy that too. Um, are you drinking coffee right now? I am. It looked like you had something frothy in your cup. <laughs> it's it's very frothy. It's it's getting down to the bottom, so I don't know how much you can see oh. there. But um, yeah, my my coffee maker actually – produces a pretty frothy coffee I've got a it's an old Nespresso machine that I bought on Facebook but it's still an espresso machine <laughs> we had, there you go it's good for you yeah Bailey Bailey was here a couple weekends ago and um Kelly our sister Kelly and her daughter Bailey and their whole family came and visited in Michigan and yeah so they were making their coffee in the morning they're like Aunt Shauna 
this machine, like what? And I was like, you got to kind of muscle it. You got to, you got to want your coffee. It's not just going to produce. And so they're like, well, ours, you just like press a button and like the coffee comes. I was like, oh girl, yeah, then you don't want it really yeah. bad. So no, my machine is clunk it on the side. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's apparently very old and yet, Ooh, good, good coffee. And then I do froth my, my creamer. So it's, super, I do too. Frothy. And I made a meal today. So there's some cinnamon and some honey in there too. Yum. All the good yeah, things. Yeah, I keep my frother right next to my coffee pot. Yum, yum, yum. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, fun. I thought maybe you had that. I'm glad. Then there's there's joy today mm-hmm. as we podcast. I have joy. <laughs> I have joy in my hands. I have joy in my cup. Y- yes. So, and I have joy in my yes. heart. Yes. Yeah. And so we're talking about, it is the second week of Advent, and we're talking about joy. And there are a lot of things that bring us joy, and those are worth celebrating. Those are fun things. A good cup of coffee. I mean, come on, your grandbaby. Like, those are beautiful things. Our people, deep conversations, like, those are all things to be celebrated. But they're, not to go, like, dark on us real quick or anything, but, like, circumstances can change so quickly. And there is a place that we can experience a deep joy that just doesn't ever go away. And that's in our relationship with the Lord. And that is where we want to place that joy. If we, if we find our joy only in circumstances, then it's, it's wavering and it will come and go, but that's not the joy that we get to find in Christ. You know, one of the the verses, and I've shared this verse before, cause I love it. Philippians four, four through five, it, Paul is writing this letter and he's writing it from prison. Mm -hmm. And so we need to take note of that. He is writing this letter from prison. His circumstances, not so good, more bleak than my, you know, circumstances ever are. And, um, this is what he writes. Rejoice in the Lord. Always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. So why does he have joy? Because the Lord is near his circumstances really irrelevant. And it's hard. I mean, it's easy for us to say that looking at Paul, like, oh yeah, you know, his joy was in the Lord. But the truth is like, how often do I let my circumstances sway my joy? My joy is in the Lord and my joy is because the Lord is near, period. Yeah. Um, that is not swayed by circumstances. So I love that. Yeah, that is so good. There's another verse in um, Psalm 16, 11 that says, you make known to me the path of life. You fill me with joy in your presence with eternal pleasures at your right hand. It's the joy that doesn't fade away. And I have, I've always enjoyed God's presence, spending time with him. But I got to tell you, the older I get, the, the longer I have spent time with him, the more I experience this reality. So it's not, I think it used to be something that I longed for. Like I, w- I want to meet with you and, and I'm hoping that you'll fill me with joy in our time together. And I think through the years and through the decades, it's more become, oh no. Yeah. Let me tell you from experience, <laughs> he fills me with joy. He fills me with joy in his presence. I, when I was going through one of the hardest times of my life, um, I was so eager to meet with the Lord in the secret place. And at that point in time, for me, it was downstairs on the couch. And I just remember, you know, grabbing my Bible and my journal and my highlighters and heading down there to my spot and feeling like a giddy teenager who is about to, you know, meet up with her boyfriend. (laughs) You know what I mean? It was just like, there was so much excitement for just, oh, I get to be, I get to be with you. And it's just going to be you and me Mm -hmm. and it's going to be so sweet. And I just can't wait to be with you. And so it is something that gets sweeter and sweeter with time. At least it has for me. Absolutely. Yeah. That's such a good um, picture because our joy is in him. And so meeting with him obviously fills us up. One of the things too, I think you, we hear this statement of, you know, don't let that person steal your joy. Don't let what this circumstance steal your joy. And the truth is nothing can steal our joy Mm -hmm. when our joy is in Christ. And so another verse, boy, we are, we are hitting hard throwing verses out today. Coming at you with the scripture. Um, But John's, we are John 16, 22. It's when Jesus is teaching, he's, he's um, with his disciples and he says, "Um, so with you now is your time of grief. 
but I will see you again and you will rejoice and no one will take away your joy. So mm. when our when our joy is in Christ for what he did for us, the price he paid for us, our joy cannot be taken away. And so again, circumstances or how somebody treats me or how somebody reacts to a situation or if someone is mad at me, none of those things can steal my joy when my joy is in Christ. Mm. And so it's just a good, good, and even a time of grief. You know, they're about to grieve the loss of Jesus in what they thought was, you know, the Messiah coming to have an earthly kingdom. And Jesus just says, no, no, no one can steal your joy. You have no idea what's coming. <laughs> yeah. Which is beautiful. That is. It's so good. You know, I mentioned earlier that in that sweetness of that time of wanting to meet with him and feeling like just all the butterflies about just being able to be alone with Jesus and spend some time with him. I mentioned that that was one of the hardest times of my life. When you, you know, when we're, when our circumstances all around us are, it feels like they're grabbing us and taking us under, it can feel hard to, to believe that Jesus is our joy and to trust that he's our joy. And I think that's where it's probably most important to, to recognize that joy is a choice we're not just we're not just recipients of joy. I mean, God gives us joy, but we can choose to not receive it. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. We can choose to when yeah. all the circumstances around us are are not what we want them to be, we can choose to focus on that. It's really about what we shift our gaze to, you know, or we can choose to focus on the Lord. And another, another verse that talks about that is from um, Habakkuk 3, 17 and 18. Though the fig tree does not bud and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails, though there are no sheep, oh, and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stalls, yet I will, I, I will myself, I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Savior. There's a, a decision involved. Right. So all of those circumstances bleak. If we're looking at all of that, that led up to, but I will, we, we would not have joy, right? But we declare, we know, you know, Habakkuk, I will have joy because my joy is in the Lord. I even, you know, the mm. Old Testament joy their joy was in the promise of the coming Messiah. And they had deep joy in that. There, you know, I was looking up even some Psalms that talk about joy. Psalm 51, 12 says, um, it, David, restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Right. Like their joy was in the anticipation of the coming Messiah. We get to live on the other side of it. Our joy is in the fact that God kept his promise and he sent the Messiah mm. to pay the price for our sins and to bring restoration and wholeness in our relationship with God. And there is true joy in that. Right. We, we get to be on the other side. We've talked about that before. It's so fun to be on the other side of knowing the fulfillment of that promise and getting to live right. in that. Yeah. And all the expectation, right, of of who he was and, and what he would accomplish. And, and the fact that he came and not only did he do exactly what he said he was going to do and accomplish everything that he said he was going to accomplish, but he poured out his spirit into us so that we could continue to bring about his purposes and his plan because the presence of God lives inside of us. And we get to continue to, you know, be people who reach up into heaven. I think the veil is way thinner than what we realize most of the time and bring the kingdom of God into the here and now by the way that we interact with people. And I just have to say, as we're kind of getting up on um, coming up to Christmas here, we're just a couple weeks away, that there are a lot of people that are open to going to church at Christmas and, and open to conversations about Jesus at Christmas that are not at other times of the year. It just the doors closed, they're doing their thing. But there's, there's, I don't know, I feel like the Lord does prepare hearts to, to hear about himself. And I even think like culturally, 
people who don't normally go to church are, they think it's a great thing to go to church on Christmas Eve. And they might even be having conversations right now about where they're going to go or if they're going to go. And so there's just really kind of a spiritual openness for us right now to invite people to come and celebrate with us and be a part of the worship services on Christmas Eve. Absolutely. Great opportunity. You know, the other thing is this time of year can be a very sad time for a lot of people. There's emotions that come up. There's grieving that we, we do of an empty chair that's going to be at the Mm -hmm. table this year. There's even, I mean, sometimes there might be a broken relationship that took place in this last year, or there might be somebody who desires very much to marry and have that relationship and they don't have that. There's all these things that kind of gets heightened in the holidays. They even talk about how um, depression can escalate at this time of year, Mm -hmm. that the holidays kind of um, foster that. And so there's a real awareness of a great opportunity to tell people about the place of true joy that we get to find our joy in Christ and Christ, our identity is in him. And it's not, it's not a mind over matter thing. Like if I just focus on Christ, then I will have more joy. Um, it, you know, and there is the retraining our thoughts. What are we going to think on that kind of thing? But the truth is like, this is a, this is a deep joy because of what Jesus did for me. That's where this joy comes from. And so we're not saying like power through and change your thoughts. That's all good. We want you to do that too. But this joy is is in really finding the joy in who God is and the price that he paid for the price that Jesus paid for you. Yeah. You know what you just said about who he is? I think that's m- maybe one of the misconceptions about being in a relationship with the Lord is that we see him as provider, which he is, but I think sometimes we take that image of him being the provider and we picture him like doling out product, right? Like, yeah. here's some joy for you. Have you had some joy? Here's some joy for you. Like, like he's passing it out. And, and I think that, you know, what we misunderstand there is he's not handing out joy. He is, he is yes. the joy, like being in, re- he's the provider, but he's also the provision. He he is our joy. And so, yeah, nobody can take that away from you because God has you firmly. Once he has you, he's got you and he's got you firmly. I have struggled a lot with, um, I don't know if you've done this, Jodes, but in my lifetime, I've I've definitely felt like joy was kind of a, a carrot at the end of the stick in a lot of ways. Like I remember when I was single and I was like, oh, you know, when I find Prince Charming and I get married, that's where my joy is going to be. Or, you know, we got married and then it was like, well, once we have kids, that's where my joy is going to be. And then we had kids and they're awesome. But then I was like, huh, once my kids sleep through the night, that's, that's where my joy is going to be. And so I have done it to myself. It's not an outside job, but in a lot of ways I've lived with an expectation that joy was just outside of my reach just outside, always just outside of my reach. And nothing could be farther from the truth because when you invite Jesus to come and be the Lord of your life, when you, when you believe that he died on the cross to save you from your sins and you do this trade, right? Like my life for yours, like you, you already gave your life for me. I want to give my life to you. I want to live for you. He comes to live inside of us. So the, the provider and the provision is already here. It's not out there on the other side of the stick at the end of the stick. Right. It's done. Mm-hmm. And and we get to we get to actually just experience that joy. One of the the other things joy is a fruit of the spirit. Like it is it is a fruit from um being in the presence of God. It's a result that comes. It's not something that we have to strive for, work for. I need to be more joyful. It needs to happen. It is a result of being in the presence of God. Galatians 5, 22 and 23 says, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Um, those things come out of a relationship with God, leaning on him. And so that's where our joy comes from. Again, not circumstantial. Like you talked about this carrot those are all circumstantial things. If this happens, then 
I will find joy. If I make this amount of money, then I'll experience joy. If I can own a home, then I'll have joy. There's all these, we could, the list can just go on Mm. and on and on instead of just resting in joy. I'm going to guess that right now there's something on your heart that you're praying for and wanting to have happen. And there might even be connected to that a belief that if God just answered that prayer, that that's where your joy would be found. (laughs) And I'm getting a little personal here because um, just over the weekend, God revealed to me, I I was, I, I, he revealed to me a lie that I was believing because I, I've been praying for something for a long time and not seeing an answer to that prayer. And it's a change that I want to see happen that, you know, according to doctors, according to, you know, experts, it's not something that's going to change. And I've been praying into it and praying to it. I'm like, but God, but God, but God. And I've, I've actually thought that this thing is keeping me from who God wants me to be. And over the weekend, he so kindly revealed to me, actually, that thing is making you who I want you to be. Oh, yes. The thorn sometimes. It's in the, in the hurt and in the struggle that we learn and lean into God. Right. But to see that God is at work in that, that it's, it's not um, senseless. It's not like just bad, but that's our God. I mean, that's how good he is. He just, he redeems all things. He can take the stuff that is bad. It's, it's, it's horrible. It's not what you would want. And he can, he makes beautiful things out of it. He, he works good even in the midst of the bad. And I, you know, I think there's a joy for me. There's a joy in that too, in knowing, Mm -hmm. okay, my joy isn't in you answering this prayer. (laughs) Yeah. It's, it's in you. It's in you. You know, we go back to um, talking about Paul in prison. And so his joy was not because he was in prison, but he didn't lose his joy because he was in prison. Right. His joy was in Christ. I'm doing some studying, um, teaching, just recently taught on um, when Moses led the Israelites, it's Exodus 15, when Moses led the Israelites out of Egypt and they come to, they've been in the desert for three, they just experienced going through the Red Sea, the parting of the Red Sea, and then walking on dry, like miracle above miracles. Mm -hmm. And then the Lord leads them into Mara, and it's a three-day journey through the desert into Mara, and they're thirsty. They've had no water. Like, that's legit. They're thirsty is an an understatement, right? And and then they cry out because the water's bitter. They can't drink the water. And God brings restoration and brings wholeness and heals the water, restores it to what it's supposed to be so that they can find refreshment there. But there's so many things that they learned in that Mm. process, in that trial, in the testing of their faith, not testing of God, but testing of their faith. And then they go on to Elam where there's 70 palm trees and 12 um, springs and they don't learn anything and there's no testing and there's no, Mm. hmm. Mm. I'm not sure I like that story, but the truth (laughs) is it's in the struggle where we actually learn who God is. And when we can have joy in that process be, and our joy again is not be, that we have this struggle i don't i don't want to be joyful that i have struggle but i can be joyful that the lord is in it and that he's teaching me yeah and and to be totally honest like we're not going to get better just because we went through hard things <laughs> yeah yeah you know i mean you can go you can go You're through right. something really really crummy and come out worse but if you if you fix your eyes on Jesus, if you if you cling to Jesus as you walk through it, I'm telling you, it's a purifying fire. It's not just a burning fire. It's a purifying fire, and and you can you can come out the other side of it pure, more pure. Yeah. And it also depends how we how we go through it. Like when we have this like martyr syndrome, I'm you know, God is just testing me. I'm got this hardship. I've got that hardship. And that's what we're focusing on. There's no joy. We're not seeking God in that. When we are really Mm -hmm. pursuing God and relationship with him, finding peace and joy in him and him alone, um, looking, asking him to show us 
where he's at work so that we can see the way that he's at work and is doing the hard work of growing and being willing to look at some of the stuff that's maybe being chipped off of us, Mm -hmm. um, our own sinful nature. That's when we get to see the growth and um, experience joy in the midst of hard things. So yeah, Yeah. it's a really good word, Shauna. I like that. And we just came out of um, No Complaining November. And let me tell you, let me tell you, scripture is chock full of verses and instructions for you and I as Christ followers to not grumble. Like it's not just one. There's, it's all throughout scripture and there's some real consequences for grumbling. I mean, the Israelites you're talking about studying the Israelites in their journey, right? Like there was some consequences for their grumbling. And for so, sure. yeah, we can choose, we can choose. You, you have free will. You can choose to complain. You really can. Or you can choose to fix your eyes on Jesus and not fabricate joy, but genuinely seek it in him and in him alone. So what does that look like for you to genuinely seek joy from God, I, I mean, you gave us a little picture of going downstairs mm-hmm. and spending time alone with him. Um, it, I mean, is there something else or is that what you would point to in finding your for joy me, that's him? Yeah, for me, that's primarily been the spot, but it's not the only mm-hmm. spot. There's just a lot of different ways that you can experience God's presence. Um, maybe, you know, I know it's Christmas time and you're listening to Christmas music, but maybe find a station that has... Christian Christmas music where the focus Mm -hmm. is on the savior. Um, that's increasing your worship music, increasing your worship at all. I mean, whether it's Christmas music or not, but just increasing your worship, it writes, I feel like it's, um, I don't know if this is a good analogy or not, because it's just on the fly, but I feel like it's a chiropractic adjustment. (laughs) Do you know what I mean? When we look (laughs) at Jesus for who he is, it's like, oh, crick, 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 you know, I, you know, things are lined up the way that they're supposed to be when we're focused on him and when we're looking at him. So really, whatever the thing is that causes you to look rightly at God for who he is, do that. It's definitely scripture for me. And so, you you know, I'm going to find myself yeah. in scripture a whole lot when when I'm feeling like somebody robbed my joy. Um, by yeah. the way, that's the work of the enemy. He's come to still kill, steal, kill, and destroy. And he'd like nothing better than to rob you of your joy. But it's not robbable. Can't happen. Yeah. He doesn't have that power. Yeah. So whether it's, um, you know, worshiping or reading scripture or being with other believers, oh my goodness, get alongside. Mm -hmm. I've, I just, I've heard this once and I, it, it stuck with me. If you want to run faster, if you want your horse to run faster, you put it on track with faster horses. I know we're not horses, but work with me. If you want to, if you want joy, if you want to be focused on Jesus, if you want to be growing spiritually, Look around you. Who are the people that are doing that? And where are they? Are they at Bible study? Are they at church on Sunday morning? Where are they? Find them and hang out with them and spend time with them. I'm telling you, it will inspire you to, you'll find yourself running faster without even realizing that you were putting forth more effort if you put yourself on on track with other believers that are running faster. So yeah. yeah, And honestly, a a great- Yeah, a great way to do that is to join a Bible study. I think so often we can think, how can you, how can I bring you into my life so that you can meet a need for me in this one relationship? And it's like, no, actually join, you just said it, join a Bible study that they're in. You know, position yourself in a place where you get to actually be prodded on by believers that you see this in. That's a beautiful thing to do. And on that note, I know this is slightly off topic, but just because it came up, I feel like it's worth saying it's, it's, it's a good thing to be seeking someone who's farther along than you in your spiritual journey and to be wanting to learn from them. But that's not where we stop. There should also be somebody behind you who's saying, oh, that girl's farther along than I am that we're pouring into. So we're not, we don't want to just be, you know, absorbing, 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 bring into other people as well. So just don't put all your eggs in that basket. Make sure that you're, that you're a conduit as you're learning, that you're leading as well. Yeah. And that you're not putting your joy in that relationship, that that person has to mm-hmm. um, actually be the one to provide all of your learning in the Lord. You need to be doing the work yourself. You need to be spending time alone with God. You need to find your spot, whether it's downstairs on the couch or um, wherever it is, you know, it's winter time, grab a blanket and a cup of frothy coffee and make that your 
um, your consistent thing that you do at a certain time of day so that you get to actually spend time in relationship with God. We read the word of God because it points us to him, um, not to check it off a list, not to become smarter, but to because it points us to him. And that's such a beautiful thing. I just have to say, before we go, Christmas is coming. And I don't say that to freak you out <laughs> and to make you go, oh my goodness, I have so much to do. But it is coming. And I, uh, we want your heart to be ready. We want your table to be ready. We want your tree to be ready. But we want your heart to be ready to celebrate the one who loves you so much that he made this holiday <laughs> possible. You know, it's his birth, him coming to earth, him saying, I want, I want to be with you so much. And, and, and I want to create a way to be with you for all eternity that he came. And so, um, yeah, I just want to encourage you, you know, if you're, if you're the kind of person who needs a little push, I want to encourage you to ready your heart for Christmas. If you're kind of, if the kind of girl who needs like a, a challenge, all right, here we go. I challenge you. <laughs> I challenge you. I know it's crazy busy. I get it. We're all busy. You can wake up 10 minutes earlier and spend some time with the Lord. So there you go. I, I caught both ends of it. There you go. The but soft touch. Do it. Tough <laughs> <Yeah>. love. <laughs> there you go. But yeah. it's worth it. Do what you need to do to just uh, make sure that Christmas morning doesn't sneak sneak up on you and all of a sudden you're like, I'm sorry, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Let's just ready our hearts now. Amen. Amen. And as you do that, remember, we serve a real God and he really loves you. <laughs>